What's going on everyone? Justin here with Lightside Wellness. In today's video, I'm going to break down the best way to take a power nap if you work in an office or at a desk. Now back during my accounting days, I used to take power naps about two to three times a week, but no one ever really told me how to optimize my nap. Like when's the best time to take a nap? What position should I be in so I'm not in pain? And what items can I use to help me fall asleep faster? Because of this, I would wake up groggier than it was before I even took my nap and my sleep position was so awful that my neck and my back would hurt for the rest of the day. My hope is by the end of this video, I'll have given you everything you need to master the office power nap and improve your productivity while making you feel refreshed and pain-free. If you have any questions throughout this video, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to get to them. Let's begin by discussing how long your power nap should be. So the maximum amount of time that your nap should be is between 10 and 20 minutes. Now the reason for this has to do with our biological sleep cycles. As you can see here, we have three stages of non-rapid eye movement and one stage of rapid eye movement, or what's called REM. Now, I'm not going to get into the differences between non-REM and REM sleep in this video, but all you need to know is that napping within the first two stages of non-REM is where you want to stay, which is why sleeping 10 to 20 minutes is the sweet spot for a power nap. Once you start napping for over 20 to 30 minutes, you start to inch closer into the deeper non-REM stages of sleep, which is what I was guilty of back when I would take power naps in the office. The reason why napping beyond 20 minutes isn't ideal is because once you've entered the deeper stages of non-REM sleep, your body becomes harder to wake up. So when your alarm goes off, your body is pissed off at you because you've woken it up from a deep sleep. As a result, you wake up with what's called sleep inertia, where you feel disoriented, groggy, and you're unmotivated to get back to work. So keep your naps between 10 and 20 minutes and you'll be golden. The best time to take your power nap is between the hours of 1 and 3 p.m. Now the reason for this is twofold and has to do with how the day is structured and human biology. If you work a 9 to 5 job, then your lunch typically falls between the hours of 11 and 1 p.m. But pushing your lunch back to 1 to 2 p.m. is probably a better option for you if you plan on napping that day. If you take your lunch later in the day, you're then able to use your lunch time to throw in a brief 10 to 20 minute power nap without being accused of sleeping on the job. The other reason why napping between 1 and 3 p.m. is ideal is because it's the biological time that we get groggy and tired. Now this biphasic sleep pattern is genetically hardwired into us and it's literally the reason why 5 hour energy exists. If you have the hour lunch break then you have more time to eat and prep for a nap. However, for those who only have about a 30 minute lunch break, you may have to budget your time accordingly so you have time to finish your meal and make room for a 10 to 20 minute nap. To determine whether you should nap closer to 1 p.m. or closer to 3 p.m., you have to take into account your chronotype. Now by your chronotype, I mean whether you're a night owl or you're a morning lark. If you're a morning lark and you fall asleep earlier in the evening, then taking your nap closer to 1 p.m. is probably best for you. However, if you're a night owl and you tend to fall asleep later in the evening, then taking your nap around 3 p.m. would be okay since you have more time to accumulate adenosine throughout the evening. Now adenosine is a chemical that accumulates in our brains and builds up what's called sleep pressure. So you can think of adenosine as a barometer that registers how long you've been awake. So the more adenosine you've accumulated in your brain, the more tired you're going to feel. Napping purges adenosine from the brain or your pressure buildup of sleep, which is why morning larks should nap earlier in the afternoon than night owls. So the takeaway here guys is that if you nap for too long or if you nap too late in the day, the nap will purge your buildup of adenosine and you'll have a hard time falling asleep at night. So be mindful of your bedtime and when it's best for you to take your naps at the office. I'd first like to note that these items are optional. However, I find that trying to fall asleep in a place that's full of light and isn't your bed can be challenging even if you're feeling tired. With that said, there are a few things that you can use to help improve the quality of your nap and help you fall asleep faster. The items I recommend for napping in the office include a sleep mask, earplugs, or a pair of headphones or earphones, a travel pillow, and maybe even cozy socks or some essential oils to help you relax if you so choose. The sleep mask comes in handy to help block out some of the light that shines through your eyelids, while the earplugs are great for canceling out the sounds of people talking, typing, and clicking. Headphones or earphones may be an alternative if you're like me and you prefer to fall asleep to binaural beats or soothing sounds. The travel pillow is used to help support and protect your neck, which I'll show you in just a second. And the cozy socks and the essential oils can be used if you really need to feel cozy in order to fall asleep. So when I would take naps at the office, my posture would be what you might imagine. I'd be 
hunched over in my chair with my head in my arms and on my desk. This was not only uncomfortable, but it made my neck and back hurt for the rest of the day. Now obviously this is not what you want to do. What you want to do instead is you want to practice what's called passive sitting. Passive sitting can be defined as requiring zero effort to sustain a neutral spine. Now this position is best sustained when your legs, back, head, and neck are supported for you. When you think of passive sitting, think of how you would sit in a recliner chair leaned back. There's no effort on your part because the chair is keeping your spine in a neutral position for you. But here are a few guidelines to determine whether your seated position is considered passive sitting. Number one, your head is in a neutral position. Number two, the backrest of your chair doesn't adjust the natural curve of your spine. Number three, the low back support of your chair doesn't seek your butt deeper into the chair. Number four, your legs and torso are at 135 degrees with your legs either supported or resting on the ground at 90 degrees. The reason why you want to maintain a 135 degree angle between your legs and your torso is because it helps to keep your quads and your hip flexors from becoming stiff by leaving your hips open. This position also places the least amount of pressure on your low back and is considered the best position for your sitting spine. So when you're ready to take your nap, what you want to do is sit in your office chair and lean back so that you're bent at 135 degrees with your back supported and your legs either elevated on another chair or bent at 90 degrees relaxed on the floor. Now a lot of office chairs don't provide head and neck support which is where the travel pillow comes in. Putting the travel pillow behind your upper back with the top supporting your neck will help you to maintain a neutral cervical spine so you don't have your head hanging off your office chair. Passive sitting is perfect for napping because it puts you in a comfortable position that requires zero effort on your part and won't compromise your spinal health. Now it's important that you don't disturb your colleagues when it's time to wake up from your nap. To be respectful of the office without overshooting your nap time, I recommend using your phone's alarm. Have one alarm that vibrates and also plays a subtle yet quiet melody. Keep your cell phone on silent mode either in your pocket or on your lap and set your alarm for 10 to 20 minutes, keeping the vibration on and set to a melody that isn't going to shock the office when it goes off. Now I know that in the corporate world and in many other industries, napping is still seen as taboo. You'll notice that in this video I didn't mention ways you can nap while looking busy or finding a secret hiding spot you could go to to take a nap. There are even videos online about how to get away with napping while looking like you're working at your desk. And these are honestly really funny and clever, but the fact that we need to hide our biological urge to slumber in the afternoon is really outdated and needs to be reevaluated by people in positions of power in the corporate world. So if you're watching this video and you're a supervisor, a middle manager, a director, or even a CEO of your own company, I implore you to reconsider the benefits of naps and how it can benefit your company's productivity, morale, and sense of well-being for your employees. Now, if you're an employee who reports to a supervisor, what I want you to do after watching this video is click on the sources that I've included in the description below, and I want you to schedule a brief meeting with your supervisor about implementing a designated nap time for your office. All the evidence you need to sway their biases are in the sources I've included for you below. If you're uncomfortable talking to your boss one-on-one, -on -one, it's okay, I get it, I understand. What I recommend instead is bringing your colleagues into it and scheduling a meeting where you all present reasons and evidence why having a designated nap time would not just be good for you guys, but for the company as a whole. Just make sure that your presentation is engaging and to the point, that way your boss has no choice but to consider your proposal. And that's all for this video guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who you think could benefit from a power nap at work. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those for you as soon as I can. Also, don't forget to subscribe by hitting that red button below that way you can get notified when new videos come out. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.